Greetings, whole people nation. I am Joy Benton, and I have the electrifying announcements to fuel your excitement for the week of March 10th, 2024. Let's shower our March babies with love. Happy birthday to all of our incredible March celebrants from your Fairfield family. May your special day be filled with joy, blessings, and unforgettable moments. And to all the couples marking their anniversary this month, here's to love, laughter, and countless cherished memories. Your Fairfield family celebrates your journey together and wishes you continued happiness. The Fairfield family received thank you cards from Deacon and Deaconess Eva Turner and Sister Gwen Bonaire acknowledging our acts of kindness during the passing of their loved ones. Our next gen youth experience is taking place this morning at 9.30 a.m. in the Michael Benson Family Life Center. Youth potty trained to high school seniors are welcome to join. Join the Fairfield Kingdom Men Prayer Breakfast on Saturday, March 16th at 8.30 a.m. in the C.L. Nall Fellowship Hall. The theme is Men Suffering in Silence, Finding Our Voice. Let's come together for a time of fellowship, prayer, and meaningful discussion. Register at www.fairfieldbc.org slash events. Next Gen is going bowling. Join us for a blast at Stars and Strikes Family Entertainment Center on Saturday, March 16th. Register now on the Next Gen page of our app or website. The cost for bowling is $5 per child and will be collected at Stars and Strikes. As we journey through the Lenten season towards Holy Week, mark your calendars for the following upcoming services and events. Palm Sunday on March 24th, Good Friday services March 29th, 11 o'clock a.m. in the C.L. Nall Chapel for the seven last words presented by our associate ministers. 7 o'clock p.m. in the Sons House, we will welcome our special guest, Dr. Sammy J. Dow and Pleasant Grove Baptist Church Marietta. Next Gen Easter Egg Hunt on Saturday, March 30th from 12 o'clock p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Resurrection Celebrations, Sunday, March 31st. Sunrise Service at 6 o'clock a.m. in the C.L. Nall Chapel. Pastor Emeritus Michael Benson will bring the message. Breakfast will be served after the service. Please visit the website to sign up for breakfast. Celebration service at 9.30 a.m., the Sun's House. Let's come together to celebrate the Holy Week with joy and reverence. Join Pastor Vickers for his upcoming speaking engagements. Tuesday, March 26, 7 o'clock p.m., West Hunter Street Baptist Church, 1040 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia, for their Holy Week revival. Thursday, March 28th, 7 o'clock p.m., Friendship Community Church, 4141 Old Fairburn Road, College Park, Georgia, for their Monday, Thursday service. Friday, March 29th, 2 o'clock p.m., Friendship Baptist Church, 80 Walnut Street, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia, for the Seven Last Saints of Christ, AUC edition. Our first quarter church conference will take place on Wednesday, April 10th, 7 o'clock p.m. in the Sun's House. Ministries are asked to present their first quarter reports. Forms can be found on our website. All members are encouraged and welcome to attend our quarterly conference. Join the Marriage Ministry for an enriching M-A-T-E event on April 13th from 10 o'clock a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m. in the C.L. Nall Fellowship Hall. Discover ways to strengthen your relationship Invest in your marriage and become whole couples, whole relationships, and whole marriages. Don't miss out on the fun and fellowship we enjoyed at our last meeting. Register on the FBC app and let's share and learn together. Excited to see everyone there. Visit our Yoke Bookstore on Saturdays from 10 o'clock a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and on Sundays before and after service. Discover a treasure trove of fairware, Bibles, and other enriching Christian resources. Our bookstore is available for you. Join the Kingdom Men every Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. in the administration building for the gathering, an evening of prayer, Bible study, and fellowship. Fair Care is here to meet your spiritual and physical needs. Fair Care is a one-stop shop for congregational care. If you are in need of assistance, please visit our website and click on Fair Care. 
Our services and supporting ministries are ready and willing to assist you. Sunday School takes place on Sundays at 8 o'clock a.m. in the Zach Brown Administrative and Educational Center as well as on Zoom. Please visit the Christian Education page on our website to connect with the online sessions. Join us every Monday at 7 o'clock p.m. for corporate intercessory prayer. Join the prayer call by dialing 540-792-0100. Enter access code 432-669-POUND. Experience the power of convenience by downloading the Fairfield app from the app or Google Play stores. Stay in the loop with our Lighthouse Weekly and other church communications delivered right to your inbox. For a wealth of information, check out our website, app, or social media platforms. Explore easy options to give your tithes and offering in person, electronically, or by mail. Don't miss out on any of our upcoming events, vital announcements, and exclusive updates. Keep those notifications on. Let's stay united, informed, and empowered as we keep pushing. Good morning, Fairfield. Good morning, Fairfield. It's a blessing to be here in the house of the prayer. Now, thinking about it, we all are just a living testimony, whether we realize it or not. We could be dead and gone, but God let us be here a little longer. I had over six people died in my neighborhood just last month. So I thank God for leaving me here on this side of the earth. If I realize there's nothing that I've done so great and so mighty that he spared my life. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you because you've been so good to us. We come this morning, Lord, lifting up your holy and your righteous name because you are worthy of all of our praise. And we give you all of our praise this morning. Lord, bless every soul and every heart on the sound of my voice this morning. Touch them right now, Lord. You know all of our need before we even ask. Bless right now, Lord. We thank you, Father for giving us another chance to come to your house to lift you up this morning. Lord, send your spirit down this morning. Send your Holy Spirit down upon us this morning that we may give you praise. We may be able to lift you up this morning because we thank you for keeping us through another week. It's blessing, Lord. Lord, bless our pastor touch him right now. Bless our musicians, our choir. Bless all of our members around here in this house today. Bless the one that are on their way. Bring them here safely. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us because you have been mighty good, mighty good to us. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name. It's in Jesus' name that I pray this morning. We give you glory. We give you honor. Now give God a praise this morning, y'all. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! 
because we all made it in here today. So we bless his name. 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 Somebody didn't make it. We bless his name. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. We bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We celebrate Jehovah today. We celebrate Jehovah today. We lift up the name Jehovah today. We bless the name Jehovah today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Come on and join us. Put your hands together. Come on and let's celebrate God today. Let's celebrate the great Jehovah today. Put your hands together. Jehovah. Praise you, praise Jehovah. Your name be lifted high. 
yes, 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 yes. Holidays and birthdays, we only get a chance to celebrate one time of the year, but there is a name that we get an opportunity to celebrate every single day, and that is the name of Jesus, that name that is above every name. So we come to do one thing today and one thing only, and that is to lift up the name of Jesus right now because he's worthy of all of our praises. He is the reason why we are here today. So we celebrate him not just once a year, not just on those special occasions, but for every single day that he wakes us up, he is worthy to be celebrated. We can't sit down on God because he does not sit down on us. He went on the cross, Jesus died, that we might have an opportunity today to lift up the name of Jesus. He is worthy of all of our praises, not just one day, not just not just one week, one month, but every single day, every second, every minute, every hour, every month, every year, through all eternity. He is worthy of all of our praises. He deserves it all. Whether we agree or not, it does not change the fact that he is worthy of it all. And one day, whether we give it to him now or later, God is always going to get the praise. The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. I don't know about you, but those who fail to do that now will one day be made to do it. I do it now because I recognize that he's worthy of it being done. So I'm not going to wait until I'm forced to. I'm doing it because he's worthy of being praised. He deserves it all. Good morning, Fairfield. Good morning, Fairfield. It is good to be in God's house. We come for one reason and one reason only, that is to lift up the name of Jesus. All hearts and minds, he's going to be lifted up. Whether you be a part of it or not, he is going to be lifted up. He's going to get the glory. He's going to get the praise. He's worthy of it. Now, do we have any first-time visitors in the house? If so, just wave your hand so we can identify you. Anybody online, if it's your first time, put in chat, first-time visitors. Now, while we got this celebration going on, we're going to do what we always do. Pull out your phones. We need a selfie of, of yourself and others around you. And why we do that? We do that because it is important that we let the world know that here at Fairfield, we believe in lifting up God's name and giving him all the praise. So pull out those phones and take those pictures and post it online and invite somebody just to join Fairfield Baptist Church. We're not ashamed of the gospel in this house. And we come just to share that. God has made it so that through social media, his word can reach around the world. So on Sundays, we take advantage of that through what we're doing now. And for those of us who are celebrating the, the visitation of our first-time visitors, we have a, a song for you, our first-time visitors, a welcome song. So rest on your feet if you can. And let us invite our new members.
This is the day that the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and be glad in it. The psalmist says, one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Don't fool me this morning. Has God kept anybody this week? God fed anybody this week? Has God covered your home and your family this week? Has God given anybody a reasonable portion of health and strength? Anybody feel the blood running warm in their veins today? Well, if God has been good to you and you're not ashamed to be a witness, you ought to rest upon your feet, wave your hand, open your mouth, and help me tell the Lord, thank you for how you kept us. Thank you for how you blessed us. Thank you for how you have sustained us. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions fail not. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness unto us. The name of the Lord be praised. You may claim your seats in the presence of the Lord. To all of our first time worshipers, again, we bid you welcome. We want you to know that it is not by accident nor coincidence that you are here, but we believe that your steps have been divinely directed by our God. It is our hope and our prayer that at the time of invitation that the Holy Spirit would move upon your heart and lead you in the next step in your relationship with God. And so whether that means giving your life to Jesus Christ for the very first time or rededicating your life to his cross and cause, or whether that means connecting to our church family, we pray that you would open up your heart and allow the Lord to have his way in your life. But just for your presence today, we are delighted that you are with us, whether on site or online. And Fairfield, come on, join me one more time and help me welcome all of our first time worshipers in the Son's house. Amen. Amen. Well, as we have shared, the month of March is Women's Month. It is Women's Month all month long, and we are excited to welcome the National Association of University Women Atlanta Branch, who are guests of Sister Evelyn Maynard. If you are here, can you just stand? Amen. Thank you so much. We thank God for your presence, and we congratulate you on your mission to serve women, youth, and the disadvantaged in our communities. We thank God for you today. Amen. Brothers, we invite you to join Kingdom Men for Men Suffering in Silence and Finding Our Voice on Saturday, March 16th. Saturday, March 16th at 8.30 a.m. in the C.L. Naw Fellowship Hall. Breakfast will be served, and we are asking brothers that you would go on our website, fairfieldbc.org, to register today. Looking forward to a great time of fellowship and brotherhood. Amen? Amen. Also, immediately after a, word, a whole word with Pastor Vickers on Wednesday, we invite you to exercise your faith in the Michael Benton Family Life Center for a 30-minute workout. This is part of our goal to become whole people. And we cannot do that if we ignore the one temple that God has given to us, for which we must be good stewards over. The Bible says it this way, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And the Holy Spirit takes residence within us. And so we are called to do all that we can to properly steward the body, the vessel, the instrument that God has given to us. And so after you have been refueled spiritually on Wednesday at noon, we invite you to go with us to exercise your faith by working out your body. Amen. And so we invite you to do that beginning on Wednesday. Also, we are excited today. Our youth are worshiping in their own experience, even as we speak. Next Gen is busy in the Michael Benton Family Life Center, and we're celebrating them along with our Next Gen staff as they work with our young people. And this is your reminder, parents, as you are enjoying worship today, that once worship has concluded, please make it your business to not be so high in the spirit that you don't come back to earth and remember to retrieve your children immediately after worship. Please, my brother, please, my sister, uh, retrieve your children so that you can hear all that they learn in their own worship experience. 
And just as we are talking about the name of Jesus, just as we are talking about the name of Jesus, they too are going through their own sermonic experience about the name of Jesus. And so we praise God for them. Mark your calendars for our Holy Week services beginning March 26, Tuesday, March 26. We will journey to the West Hunter Street Baptist Church. And on March 28th, Thursday, March 28th, we will join the Friendship Community Church uh, for Monday, Thursday service. And then Friday at 11 a.m., we will be in the CL Nod Chapel with our associate ministers as they present the seven last sayings. And then we will also come to the son's house at 7 p.m. for our Good Friday worship experience where we will celebrate with Dr. Sammy J. Dow and the Pleasant Grove Baptist Church of Marietta who will be our guests. And then that same day on Good Friday at 2 p.m., uh, I will be sharing in the seven last saying service at the historic Friendship Baptist Church in the city of Atlanta. And so we have a full slate of events that week, uh, which will culminate that weekend with our annual Easter egg hunt for our young people on Saturday, and then on Resurrection Sunday at 6 a.m. in the Nall Chapel, we will celebrate sunrise service, and our pastor emeritus, Dr. Michael Benton, will bring the early morning message, and then we will have breakfast immediately after that service, and then at 9.30 a.m., we will gather in this space to celebrate our risen Lord. And so we praise God in advance for how the Lord will be with us. And we encourage you to visit our website for details. And then finally, brothers and sisters, our deepest sympathy to Sister Gail Johnson and the passing of her husband, Maurice. Details of the celebration of life service are forthcoming. We're asking that you would keep her and the family in your prayers. In addition to all of our other bereaved families, those who are sick, and all of those uh, for whom we are duty-bound to pray. For all other announcements, consult our website, kick the tires on our social media sites so that you may stay apprised of all the happenings here at Fairfield Baptist Church. Amen. Well, it is offering time in God's house, and how glad we are to be invited to participate in what God wants to do in the world. All around us, God is blessing us. There was an old song that used to say, when I think of all the good things that are happening to me, legs to walk, ears to hear, and eyes to see, when I think of all the good things that he sends my way, it must be Jesus looking out for me. And that ought to be somebody's testimony today that the reason I'm here is because Jesus has been looking out for me. When I didn't have enough sense to look out for myself, Jesus was looking out for me. When I didn't have enough to make ends meet, it was Jesus looking out for me. When I couldn't help myself, when I couldn't push myself, it was Jesus looking out for me. And so as we come to this time of giving, we do so with the awareness and with gratitude because all along our life's experience, Jesus has been looking out for us. To all of our first-time worshipers here at Fairfield, this is the only offering we receive. If you care to give, we invite you to do so, but know that we are just excited to have you in our midst today. We want you to know that you're able to give several different ways. If it is your desire to give physically uh, by way of check or cash and you are in need of an envelope, kindly raise your hand and our ushers will be delighted to serve you. We also want you to know that you are able to give several different ways electronically. Those ways are available on the screen, but we want you to know that whichever way you give, it is blessed and God will use it for the upbuilding of his kingdom for the relief of the poor and for the spread of the gospel to all nations. We are also excited because we have challenged ourselves to give above and beyond our tithes and offering into our 4321 mortgage elimination campaign where we are striving to eliminate four million dollars in three years to God's glory as one church and we are believing by faith that by December 31st 2024 we will be debt free. At the outset of this initiative we were looking at the mountain of $4.35 million in debt, and I am pleased to report that today our debt has dwindled down to $1,579,368 to the glory of God. The debt is coming down, and it is already done 
according to our faith. I believe that whatever God said in heaven has already been settled on earth. And then if I can push it a little further, it is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He's willing and able to do the same thing for you. If you take care of God's house, God will take care of your house. It is a joy to give. It is a privilege to be a part of the kingdom of God, knowing that we are in God's hands. God has promised to take care of us, hasn't he? And so this is our opportunity to put feet on our faith and stand upon the word of God. Here at Fairfield, we recite our stewardship confession. It tells us what we give, why we give, and the blessing tied to our giving. As we rest upon our feet, as we are able, I invite you to say this with me. I am a cheerful giver and a bountiful sower. I am committed to giving my time, talents, and time. I believe that God is the source behind every resource. I believe that God will supply all of my needs and make all grace abound toward me. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in advance. We simply ask God that you would do it again. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for opening doors for us. Now, God, stretch our faith to trust you even when it is challenging. We know that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to you. We know that if we cast our bread upon the water, it will return in as many days. Now, God, do what you said you would do. Let there be no lack in our homes, in our lives, because of our giving. But God, stretch us to trust you, even and especially in the area of our finances, knowing that you are God who cannot lie. You are not like man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. So, God, we pray that you would bless us in our giving as you sustain us in our living. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now give according to how the Lord has prospered us.
Father and our strong God, yes, we thank yes, you Lord. and we praise you for the reminder that you are everything that we need. All of our sufficiency is found in you, for you are the all-sufficient God. If we have everything and everybody else but don't have you, our lives are living in a deficit. But Lord, if we have you and nothing else, we have everything we need to make it. And so we thank you for this reminder through song of your goodness, of your supreme power. We thank you for who you are in our lives. Now, Lord, as we turn our attention heavenward, we pray that there would be a meeting between heaven and earth between pulpit and pew we need to hear from you today send a rhema word send a fresh anointing pour out an anointing that makes preaching easy that makes listening receptive and application practical come now thy people bless and give thy word success spirit of holiness upon us descend this is our fervent and effectual prayer in jesus name amen all the people who love the lord put your hands together give god thanks and praise would you join me in celebrating this choir this music ministry for blessing us in such a wonderful way To God be the glory for the great things he has done. I invite our attention again to the book of Revelation, chapter 5. Thank God for all of our leaders, our pastor Emeritus and his family, and to all of these ministers deacons, deaconesses, mothers, every officer of the church, all of our members, visitors, friends, we thank God for you today. We're continuing in our series, The Name of Jesus, and I want to, as my generation says, run it back. I want, I want verses one through five again. <laughs> then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Last week I lifted the A clause of verse 5. I want to Lift the B clause today. The root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may claim your seats in the presence of the Lord. Today as we talk about the name of Jesus, I want to talk about the root of David. The root of David. Is there anybody here this morning 
who knows what it means to be rescued. No, I mean, I mean really rescued. Uh, allow me to push it a little further. Is there anybody here this morning who understands what it means for God to rescue you? I mean for God to, to completely flip your fortunes around. Have you ever found yourself in such a dismal state? There was nothing you could do about where you were. There was no one who could help you, no one who could assist. And you felt as if things were done for you. It was over for you. You had almost accepted the fact that the way life was for you was the way that it was going to be. And yet out of nowhere and in the nick of time, God swoops in and, and rescues you. If you've ever been down to your last dime and didn't know how you were going to pay your bills, and somehow, some way, you looked up and discovered that the bills were paid and the gas tank was full and you had a few dollars left over. You, you know what it means for God to rescue you. If you've been sick and couldn't get well and doctors had given up on you and they've called your family in because they've done everything they could do and they've told you start making funeral arrangements and express your last wishes, and you look up and over the process of time, you realize that was five and 10 years ago and you're still here. You know what it means for God to rescue you. If you've ever been in school and know you didn't have enough tuition to cover the costs and, and they were purging classes and you see people beside you who have to go home and yet you go back and check with the registrar and discover that everything is just as it needs to be and you can keep Studying, you know what it means for God to rescue you. And perhaps I have not gone down your street just yet, but you know better than anybody else the times in your life where God has swooped in and rescued you, where God has come through in the clutch, where God has opened a door that no man can close and closed doors that no man can open. Somebody here ought to be courageous enough to testify that I'm still here because God has rescued me. I'm a beneficiary of the fact that God reserves the right to step in and to make a difference in one's life. And perhaps you are here today, you're on the short side of rescue. While folks around you are shouting and celebrating, you are like Job. You are saying to yourself, all the appointed days of my time will I wait until my change come. You're believing for God to rescue, but God hasn't quite rescued you yet. You, you're believing that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that works in you, but that power doesn't seem to have shifted anything around you yet. I've come this morning to encourage all of those who have gathered under the sound of my weak voice who are waiting on God to rescue you. You're waiting on God to deliver you. Now, I want to suggest this. This is not a word for those who are inactive and are not doing anything on your own behalf. This is a word for those who have exhausted every other measure, who have done everything that they could possibly do or think of, and yet you are still falling short. I've come to let you know that we serve a God who still is able to come to your rescue. Don't care how high the mountain, I don't care how dark the night, I don't care how low the valley, I don't care how great the distance. I've come to let you know that we have a God who is still willing and able to come to your rescue. And if 
if this message is not for you, help me preach to your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is still able to rescue. God is still able to rescue. I know that it's hard right now, but he's still able. I know that it's dark right now, but he's still able. I know that you're ready to throw in the towel, but he's still able to come to your rescue. What a timely word for the seven churches in Asia Minor to whom the seer, the prophet John, the apostle John writes as he is in prison, scholars believe, on the Isle of Patmos. He writes to them as encouragement to hold on to your faith and to believe that even though you are under subjection, under the occupation rule of Rome, the God that we serve and his Messiah who has already conquered is able to come to your rescue. Now, while you may feel as if fortunes are bad, while you may feel as if life is hard, the God whom we serve, who sent his son as the atoning sacrifice for the sin of the world is still able to rescue. And just because it's hard right now does not mean that God does not have the power. Just because you don't see God's hand active doesn't mean that God's hand is not at work. John writes to encourage the seven churches in Asia Minor that God is still able to come to your rescue. And it is here in the middle of the worship scene that we find in Revelation 4 and 5 that John begins to describe the scene of worship in heaven. And as we discussed last week, we learned that the entire situation of the world, that the final days of the world have been written on a scroll or on a little book on the front and on the back, almost like a legal document, and it has been sealed with seven seals. It has been sealed with seven seals, seven being one of the Bible's complete numbers to suggest to us that this work is whole, that this work is entire. But the problem is that while a call goes out from heaven to all of heaven through all of the earth and even down into the depths of those who have deceased there are none who are found worthy to break the seals and to open the scroll and this would have been an emotional disruption for John because John was told that he would be witnessed and privy to all that is to take place in the last days and so John begins to weep because while a call goes out to heaven nobody in heaven responds. And while a call goes out to the earth, nobody in earth responds. And while a call goes out under the earth, nobody from under the earth responds. And it seems to John that the promise of God is going to be aborted for his situation. John had hope that God was going to step in and rescue those who had been under the evil subjection of Rome. John had hoped that he would be able to provide a word of comfort to all of those who are suffering under oppression. And so John begins to weep. John begins to cry, not out of selfish reason, but out of reason for the cause of the world. John begins to weep for all of those who are counted among the righteous. Because what do you tell people who have made their life goal to serve God and yet in their serving they are called to suffer? How do you encourage people whose desire is to only live for God and do the right thing and yet it seems that the evil continue to prosper and the wicked continue to have their way? How do you encourage the righteous when they turn on their television and hear the highest office in the land telling the truth only to be met with venom from folks who know he's telling the truth but because of their own evil leanings and bent they can't get excited how do you encourage people whose only desire is to do that which is right and it seems like their hope is delayed it seems as if the rescue of God is going to be delayed how do you come to 6133 and tell folks who are in the midst of trouble that the light 
at the end of the tunnel seems much further away than you would hope. John begins to weep. Then out of nowhere, as John is weeping, one of the 24 elders who is seated around the throne of God looks upon the face of John and says, John, wipe your eyes. John, stop your weeping. You have allowed yourself to forget that if God makes a promise, that God has no choice but to bring the promise to pass. John, wipe your eyes. You have forgotten that all promises in him are yes and amen. John, wipe your eyes because if God said it, that settles it. John, wipe your eyes. I know that the promise of God seems delayed, but God can't help but to keep his word. Fairfield, wipe your eyes. Dry your tears. I know that it's rough right now. I know that it seems that there's no answer for your prayer but wipe your eyes because God can't help but to keep his promise on your life. You ought to lay hands on yourself and encourage yourself that whatever God promised me, whatever God said concerning me, God has to bring it to pass. John, wipe your eyes. John wipes his eyes and as John is wiping His eyes, the word from the mouth of the elder, comes to John and says, John, look up, because coming toward you is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Not only is he the lion of the tribe of Judah, but he is the root of David. He, he, he's, he's the root of David. You, you ought to dry your eyes because although it has been delayed, what has been promised you has not been denied. Wipe, wipe your eyes. John the Lion of Judah is coming forth. The root of David is here. In order to appreciate what the elder is saying to John, brothers and sisters, we learned last week to appreciate what is meant by the line of Judah, that we had to travel all the way back to Genesis 49, understanding that if you pull a string in Genesis, it has to crinkle in Revelation. We, we, we know that. But in order to appreciate the root of David, you and I have to travel to Isaiah Chapter 11, verse number 1. It is there that we find these words. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. What we find here, brothers and sisters, is coronation language. The crowning of a king. It was understood, brothers and sisters, that it was through the line of Jesse, through the line of David, that the king of Israel would rule from Jerusalem. We we, we know this. And at this particular time, this language that is used in Isaiah, according to scholars, is being attributed to the coronation potentially of King Hezekiah. This language as the anointed one was always reserved. This language of the Messiah was reserved for the one who was seated upon the throne of Israel. It was understood and believed at this time, brothers and sisters, that kings had a divine-like nature. In fact, kings were called the son of God. They were believed to be the adopted son of God. And there was a promise concerning David's line that the scepter would not leave David's house. That the king would rule from the throne 
would always be from the line of David, from the line of Jesse. But here comes a problem. There came out of David's line a succession of unholy kings. We were able to appreciate the great lineage of David, knowing that his ancestry really starts with the Jewish brother Boaz and the Gentile woman Ruth, who was gleaning from his field as instructed by her mother-in-law, Naomi. This Moabite woman and this Jewish man. And eventually from that line, we find Jesse, who gave birth to the number of sons, the least of those, David, who was overlooked to be king over all of Israel. But when the prophet Samuel went to his house and Jesse lined up his sons, Samuel said, no, not him. No, not him. Not him. Not him or him. Do you have any more sons? And Jesse said, well, there's one out in the back who's tending to the sheep, but you really don't want him. He's not really cut out to be the king. And Samuel says, go get him anyway. And when David steps to the front, the spirit of the Lord said to Samuel, that's him. Anoint him. And David was anointed to be king over all of Israel. David had his share of challenges. The problem with David being anointed as king over all of Israel was the fact that there was a sitting king of Israel by the name of Saul. But God had fired Saul, but still allowed him to keep working. Saul was still on the throne, and we would go on to discover that some 37 odd times after Saul realized that God's hand was upon David, Saul tried killing David. But when God's hand is on your life, it doesn't matter what folks say about you when God's hand is on your life. It doesn't matter what folk try to do to you when God's hand is on your life. What God has for you is for you. And somebody ought to be shouting right now. Somebody ought to be celebrating right now. Because when you think about all that God has brought you through, all of the mountains that God has brought you over, all of the weapons that formed but did not prosper, and you're still here today somebody ought to be shouting giving God glory that despite what folks said and what folk tried to do I'm still here because God came through and rescued me and so David becomes king over all of Israel the Bible says that David served his generation well, and then he fell asleep. Solomon becomes king and becomes the wisest of all of the kings. God's expectation of a king of Israel was that they would not be like any of the other kings of the world. They were not to be given over to money and power and international alliances because God understood that Israel had a proclivity of turning away from him and falling into idolatry. And in all of Solomon's wisdom, for which he is still renowned to this day, we talk about the wisdom of Solomon, but we fail to talk about the foolishness of Solomon. Because in all of his wisdom, Solomon forgot God's expectation. And Solomon's 700 wives and concubines were not indicative of a flesh issue. It was not indicative of the fact that he was a player. It was indicative of the fact that Solomon had made international alliances and in so doing accrued many wives and concubines, which was a direct affront and violation of what God said a king of Israel was supposed to be. And might I suggest to you, brothers and sisters, be careful when you read the highlights on social media. Highlights on social media and statuses tell you the successes, but they don't tell you the failures. Solomon, even in his wisdom, found himself to be foolish, which is why there were no more wise kings after Solomon, which is why we find that there was a succession of unholy kings who ruled over Israel. And by the time Israel was carried away into Babylonian captivity,
We discovered that Zedekiah was the last king over Israel. In fact, the Bible tells us that while Israel was carried away, that Zedekiah was carried away into captivity because he had done evil in the sight of the Lord, his God. And Zedekiah dies in Babylon. And from Zedekiah to the birth of Jesus, 580 years, there was no king over Israel. It seems as if God has made a mistake. It seems as if we now have evidence to sue God and to bring him on charges of sovereign malpractice. Because God, you said that there would be a king from the line of David. And for 580 years, there has been no king. You said that the scepter would never leave David's house. But there's no scepter ruling over Israel. In fact, not only does it seem that there is no monarchical line from David, but the tree has been cut off. Not only is there no king, but now the line of David is an impoverished line. Went from ruling up here to being poor down here. It seems as if God has forgotten his promise. Can you come a little closer? I, I, I'm talking to all of those who are here today who are frustrated with God because it seems that God has forgotten his promises concerning you. I, I'm, I'm talking to the 10 or 12 of us who are ready to give up on God because it seems as if God has forgotten what God said. I'm talking to those of us who are through with this church stuff. I don't need to dress up. I don't need to come to church. I don't need to participate in a ministry because it seems that God is busy answering everybody else's prayer. But it seems that God has forgotten what he has said about me. But I've come to let you know that no matter how much time seems to pass, God has not forgotten about you. And although it seems as if there's nothing that can be done about your situation, God reserves the right to come to your rescue and so John says I was weeping but the elder said wipe your eyes because here comes the lion of Judah here comes the root of of David. It, it has been described that, that, that David's line was like a tree. It was a sprawling tree, an image of power and provision and sustenance. But the tree was cut off. And what was a tree has now become a stump. We had a stump in our neighborhood. I would go outside and play. And I would sit on the stump. And when I felt a little churchy, I would stand upon it and turn it into a pulpit and preach from the stump. And I examined that tree, Pastor Emeritus, and it seemed to me that there was no life coming from the tree. Seems that nothing can grow from a stump. I watched that tree for years. I watched that stump for years. It was subject to the Michigan elements. 
On, in the winter, it had snow on top. In the spring, it just looked dead. In the summer, grass grew all around it. In the fall, leaves laid upon it. There was nothing special about the storm. But then one day, I went outside to play. And I noticed that in the middle of a stump, there appeared to be something shooting from the middle of it. I saw some greenery. And I saw what appeared to be a small branch. And I went to my best friend's house and I told his dad, who had a green thumb, I said, our stump is doing something weird. There's a, there's a stick on the stump. And he came outside, Uncle Jonathan came outside, and he said, Eric, that's not a stick. That's a root. I, I said, how can a root grow from the stump when the stump is dead? How can something living grow out of something that's dead? He said, Eric, you got to understand that all you see on top of the ground is a stump. And the stump appears to be dead. But you got to understand that underneath, there's something that still gives it life. Underneath the stump, the stump is a attached to the roots and the roots run underground and water that comes from the rain that seeps into the ground still nourishes the tree and even though the tree looks dead there's still some life in it because God has a way of rescuing the very things that we have pronounced as dead and all brothers and sisters I don't know what seems to have died in your life but I've come to let you know that that the roots are still attached and life can still grow from the things that seem to have died because God is still in the rescuing business. And that's, that's what John is helping us to understand. Everybody understood that the line of Jesse was a tree, but it became a stump. The tree was dead. There was no life coming from the tree. The last king over Israel, Zedekiah, died in Babylon. And it seemed to the world that there would never be another king of Israel but I'm so glad that when man says no God still reserves the right to say yes that's why Michelle Williams got it right when she said when Jesus says yes nobody can say no and for 580 years, there had been no anointed one. For 580 years, there had been no son of God. For 500 years, it seems as if the promise of God had been cut off and forgotten. It seems that God's promise had died. But John says that the root of David is here. What God said still has to come to pass. That's why you ought to be excited within yourself. Whatever God said has to come to pass. And I love what John hears the elder say. The elder says to John, wipe your eyes. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, here it is, has conquered and he is worthy to open the seal he has conquered it seemed that the root of David was the one who was conquered he gave his life on the cross by way of Roman execution 
But that's not what the elder says. The elder says that the root of David has conquered. The one that is the root out of the tree who gave his life on a tree has conquered. And he is worthy to open the seals. He is worthy to open the book. He is worthy to bring God's promises to pass. And that's all I've come to tell you. That's why I love the name of Jesus. Because when man says no, God can still say yes. That's why I love the name of Jesus. Because it reminds me that even when life is delayed, God's promise is not denied. That's why I love the name of Jesus. The elder says that he has conquered. Well, Pastor Vickers, how did he conquer? I'm so glad you asked on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame for twas on that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain that's what the hymn poet was saying that Jesus hung bled died gave his life hung his head in the locks of his shoulders but early Sunday morning stood up on resurrection ground in victory and said all power in heaven and earth is in my hand and because of what Jesus has done because Jesus faced the powers of the day and already overcame Rome this was a word of comfort to all of those who were suffering and struggling that because the victory has already been won that because the battle has already been fought John you can dry your tears and that's what I've come to tell you, Fairfield, that because you already have the victory, you can dry your tears. You can put a smile back on your face. You can go to sleep tonight. You don't have to cuss nobody out because the victory has already been won. The battle has already been fought. The root of David has already secured the victory. We can leave here rejoicing. Because of the root of David, the lion of the tribe of Judah, he's already conquered. And he is worthy. Gotta go. Doors of the church are open. But the greatest shout of the text is that he's worthy. I know we said it last week, but I asked for permission to run it back. That's the joy because he has conquered. He is worthy. It's not a suggestion. It's not a question. It's a statement of affirmation that he is worthy. And that's the question I have for you. Can't you see that he's worthy? Can't you see that he's worthy to receive glory? Worthy to receive honor? Worthy to receive praise. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the root of David. And no matter what has happened in your life, God is still able to rescue your story and turn everything around. That's the message. I'm done. That's the message. That no matter where you are, God is able to take your story and turn it around because the root of David has conquered. Pastor, you don't understand how bad my story is. I don't have to understand. Here's what I know. Here's the truism that trumps your truth of where you are. God is able to rescue you and turn it around. When you go home today, when you go to work this week, when you look at the challenges in your life, remind yourself that because of the root of David, God reserves the right to rescue my story.
and my situation is not my destination. Where I am is not my final stop. God has a way of rescuing my story and turning everything around. Dry your eyes. Put your trust in Him. Don't give up on Him. God has not forgotten about you. Hold on to your faith. So if you're here today, if you're here today and you're serious about making some changes, stop looking at your situation and start looking at the God who sits above your situation. You've been worried about it long enough. You've been crying about it long enough. You've been complaining about it long enough. Now make a decision about it. Entrust your life to the one who has already conquered. I don't have any gimmicks for you. I don't have any games for you. I would love to be able to tell you that if you just spin around five times, that everything in your life will change. I would love to tell you that if you just give me three easy payments of $9.99, that I can mail you an anointed prayer cloth that will wipe your situation because I don't have that. All I have for you today is the promise of a presence of the Savior who has already conquered and who's able to rescue you and turn your life around. If you tried everything else, try him today. If you're here, that's you. We invite you to come today. Step out on faith. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about who's beside you. If you want to be in relationship with the root of David, with the line of the tribe of Judah, the one who has conquered, the one who is worthy, you can be saved today. Main floor, balcony, on site, online. If that's you, give your life to him today. Type your need. We invite you to come. Come on, I see you. Don't give up on God. He won't. Somebody can testify. He's able. You want to be saved. You want to know what it means for your life to be rescued. You can be saved today. Come on, wherever you are.
This is your opportunity to praise him. This is your opportunity to worship the God who keeps his promises. All promises in him are yes and amen. God's word has been settled in heaven. Whatever God said, he's faithful to perform. He's faithful to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. If God said it, if God said it, I don't care how long you have to wait. If God said it, that settles it. God's able to do. He has the power to do. The exousia. To do what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise. I love the way that the biblical languages read. We discussed this in Bible study that there is no future tense. That whatever God said he will do, it literally means he has already done it. You missed your shout. I'm talking to the folks who are trying to believe and hang on to and hold on to what God said. If God said he will do it, it literally means it has already been done. You're just waiting on the manifestation to see it. Whatever God promised, even if you don't see it, you can shout about it because it has already happened in heaven. If God said he will do it, God is faithful to perform it. You can dry your eyes. Stop weeping, John. Dry your eyes. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, is on the scene, already making waves, already opening doors, already healing your body, already paying your bills. God will do what he said he would do. Every promise, every promise, Every promise, every promise. He's able. He's able. Trouble in your home? Able. Problems on your job? able don't know how things are going to turn out he's able to God be the glory I'm trying to move we got to go but there's something about the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus make you laugh when nothing's funny make you run when nobody's chasing you makes you clap when there's no music I love the name of Jesus that penniless prophet from Palestine his name is a symphony in two syllables I love the name of Jesus he's worthy to be praised Fairfield, can you help me celebrate with two who have come to unite with the Fairfield family today? Come on, can you help me praise God? Hallelujah. 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 We are so excited that God has led you to connect to the Fairfield family. Out of all of the churches in the Atlanta metro area, God led you to Fairfield Baptist Church, and we praise God 
that you were obedient to his spirit and to his voice as it relates to your decision today. We want you to know that we are excited to help you discover your gifts. We are excited uh, to find out how you will plug into the life of this church and work out your soul's salvation in fear and trembling. And according to Luke 15, the Bible says that the angels in heaven rejoice over one that comes home. And since we got two, let's go on and have a praise party right here, just like they're doing in heaven. We praise God for you. We are so excited. We want to make sure that we share with you uh, just what your decision means, all of the implications for your decision today. And so uh, we're going to invite you to go with our First Impressions team along with our Minister of Assimilation. And we're going to retrieve some information from you as well as get some information so we can continue this great conversation about what it means to be part of Fairfield Baptist Church. But we want you to know, first things first, we are excited. We are excited that you are here. Now, do you have all of your belongings, you got your purses, everything? Your dad can get it? All right. Well, we will invite you to stand at this time and follow the direction of our First Impressions team. Come on, Fairfield, one more time. Help me praise God. Can we thank our deacons who have served so admirably today? Dad is happy. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. He's worthy. And he's able. I'm going to leave that alone. We'll mess around and have a second service talk about how he's able. Amen. Amen. Well, Fairfield, we praise God for each of you. We want to remind you of all of the announcements that have give, been given. Please govern yourself accordingly. So much happening. God is blessing us in so many different ways. We want to remind you of Bible study this week at 12 p.m. and at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. And immediately after the 12 p.m. in-person Bible study, we'll be exercising our faith as we are taking care of our temples uh, for 30 minutes. We invite you to come on out and be a part of that great sharing together. Let us remember all of those who are sick among us, all of our bereaved families, those who are standing in the need of prayer. All of us are standing in the need of prayer, uh, but for those especially who have petitioned the prayers of the church, we want to remember them in a very special way. Again, would you join me in thanking God for this music ministry who has blessed us today. Thank God for our media team who has done a stellar job once again. And to all of you, for your prayers and your presence, we thank God for you. As always, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. As we leave this place, but never from his presence, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let's go home. shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. May the Lord God Almighty bless you in your downsetting and your uprising. 
as you come and as you go in the city and in the field and your joy and in your sorrow in your labor and in your leisure be blessed my brother be blessed my sister until we meet at the feet of Jesus where there's neither sunrise nor sunset to him be glory in the church now and forever and all of God's people said amen 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 Get your kids. God bless you. Have a great week.